Hi y'all, my name is Dylan. I'm an engineer and a founder at Pipedream, and I'm excited to show you exactly how Pipedream works. Pipedream is an integration platform built for developers. The core concept of Pipedream is what we call a workflow. Workflows are just a sequence of steps, so you can run any Node.js code, require any NPM packages, or use pre-built actions that allow you to connect to hundreds of apps without having to actually write the code to do that yourself. Workflows run on triggers, so things like HTTP requests, timers, emails, really any event from any SaaS app or developer tool. You can run workflows at no cost, and you can create as many workflows as you want. So click on the Get Started button to sign up, and we'll build our first workflow. I'm going to show you all how to build a workflow to process new user signups for an app. This is a use case we have at Pipedream. It's pretty common across companies and it really highlights some of the more advanced features of the platform, so it's a good demo. End-to-end, -end, I am going to receive HTTP requests from our core Pipedream.com app. When a new user signs up, it'll send a request to this workflow. I'm going to process that with a little bit of Node.js code, and I'm going to send an email and a Slack message. And throughout that, I'm just going to sprinkle in a bunch of the more complex features of Pipedream just to show you how all this works. So every workflow begins with a trigger. Again, I mentioned in this case, we're going to use an HTTP trigger, but I can run jobs on a schedule, just like a cron job using the cron scheduler trigger, or I can run uh, workflows in response to inbound emails. When I select the HTTP trigger, we automatically generate an endpoint URL specific to your workflow. Any requests sent to this URL run the rest of the workflow. When I I want to simulate a request when I'm just testing my workflow, though. I don't want to have to go back and forth between curl or postman or some other HTTP client. Uh, so we have this send test event button here that'll actually send a test request to this endpoint URL. And I can modify the data that gets sent right here. I'll save that and send a test event. I see the event show up in the inspector here, and then I see the event data just below my trigger. So there's a bunch of HTTP specific metadata that will expose for you here, the method, the headers. If I expand the body, we automatically inferred this as JSON, and then we actually convert the event body to its JavaScript object equivalent. So this whole thing is a JavaScript object that you can reference in future steps, and I'll show you how that works now. I'm going to add a new step. In this case, I'm going to run Node.js code. So every step is just a function. And by default, this step gets two parameters, the event that triggered our workflow as the event variable here, and then a steps object that contains data returned from steps above this current step. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. For now, I'm going to see what event.body.name contains. To actually memorialize these changes, I want to hit deploy, and that cuts a new version of our workflow and deploys that to Pipedream servers. We increment the version here, and then any new request sent to this endpoint URL run against the newest version of the code. So I see the new event here, I scroll down, and I see that console.log statement directly below my step. So all standard output produced from steps is coupled to the step. It makes it really easy to troubleshoot. So now, like I mentioned, we need to return data from steps so that we can use that data in the next step. Again, steps are just functions. And so I receive input, I produce output. You can use traditional return statements, which will end the execution of this step, return the data, and then move on to the next step. But I'm going to show you um, a slightly more advanced way to return values from Pipedream that make it a little easier to work with. So we have this method of returning data via step exports, as we call them, by setting properties of the this object. So in the context of steps, this refers to the current step. And if I set a property first name, I export data at that property. And I'll show you how this works end to end. So this dot first name, I want to be equal to event dot body dot name. I'll split that on spaces and then grab the first element of that array. I'll deploy my change. 
and send a new test event. When this runs, I see the original console.log statement. In addition to this, steps.nodejs.firstName. Steps.nodejs is the name of the step. First name holds the value Luke that I extracted here. So I can reference that in later steps of my workflow. Just like functions, I can name steps just to make this a little more descriptive. So before I move on, I'm just going to say this step is called get first name. When I run this one more time, instead of steps.node.js, I see steps.getFirstName.firstName as the export value. So let's see how we can reference this. I'm going to add a new step. In this case, I'm going to send an email. This is one of our hundreds of actions that Pipedream supports. So we're adding more actions every day. Actions are just code that Pipedream packages for you in a function that allows you to pass input values in form parameters. We add validation, nice labels. Actions are meant to be, again, functions that are really easy for you to use. You have access to event and steps, just like you do in code steps. So as the subject of my email, I'm going to email myself. This action sends an email to the user you registered on Pipedream. Let's say new user event.body.name. We smartly recognize, again, the structure of event as a JavaScript object. And then the last event that was sent will extract the value and show you that here, just to show you exactly what you're about to send. Just an example. The text, I'm going to say tell steps.getFirstName.FirstName thanks for signing up. I'll deploy this and I'll send one more test event. End to end now, I parse the first name, I'm sending myself an email, and if I check my email, I should see new user Luke Skywalker, tell Luke thanks for signing up. Let's add one more action to show you a little more complex example of how to connect um, an account. So we use Slack at Pipedream, and I want to notify the rest of the team that a user has signed up. I'm going to add a new step. I'm going to search for Slack. Having chosen Slack, I'm presented with all of Slack's actions. Slack has hundreds of possible things you can do with their API. So we're supporting more and more apps every day. Just search in that search box. If you don't see the app uh, that you need to use, please reach out on our community or via support just to let us know because we're very happy to add it for you and try to generate actions. It'll make your life easier. In this case, I know the API endpoint I need to hit is called chat.postmessage. So I search for that. This sends a message to a channel. I select this and I get a few warnings. I need to connect a Slack account before I can use this action. Okay, so this requires that I connect to my Slack workspace. I'll click connect account. This opens up an OAuth flow that authorizes Pipedream to make API requests on my behalf. Note that there's quite a few scopes here, uh, but we're working on a way to pass dynamic scopes. You can really tightly scope only exactly what you need to do for this specific step, and we want to give developers that control. So I'll allow the channel, in this case, is new users. I set up this new users channel over here in this workspace. The text, I just want to be a simple notification for now event.body.name. Okay, I'll just tell everybody there's a new user that signed up. I'm going to deploy this. And I'm going to send a new test event. And if everything worked correctly, I should see a new user sign up right here. Okay, so that's a good example end to end of how to use connected accounts. Now, there's a problem with this workflow. Sometimes if you've used any new user signup systems, you might get duplicate messages sent from your original app via webhook or um, you know, even your core app might send a couple of messages which generate a couple of emails or Slack messages, which can be especially problematic if you're actually sending the new user themselves an email. You definitely don't want them to get a duplicate message. So we need to maintain state. 
We need to know what users have we already emailed, or in our case, what users have we told ourselves signed up. And we need to make sure we don't send duplicate messages if we receive duplicate inbound requests. So in general, I just need to maintain state in my workflow, and Pytrium has a pretty convenient way to do that. I'm gonna add a new step up here near the top of my workflow to run new Node.js code. And I wanna walk through this code end to end to show you how this works. So we expose this variable dollar checkpoint. Dollar checkpoint is a global variable available in any step. You can store any JSON serializable data in dollar checkpoint. So any strings, numbers, objects, arrays, and you can read that the next time your workflow runs. So dollar checkpoint operates as a very simple key value store. In this case, I am requiring a package Lodash, which is just a little helper module that helps me write less code for this code step. So note that you can use any, in pack, any NPM package simply by requiring it. There's no package.json, there's no NPM install necessary in this case. I'm gonna use event.body.name in a couple places, so I've just extracted it here as a variable. This line tells me if I've run this workflow before, and save data in this dollar checkpoint dot users property, I'm gonna extract that data as the users variable. Otherwise, if I don't have any data, so if it's the first time my workflow runs, I'm gonna return an empty array. I don't have any users I've seen so far. Then we ask, is this user in the list of users we've already seen? If it is, and this is a duplicate message, we say, we've already sent a message for name. Dollar end ends the execution of your workflow early. This is also a special pipe dream function available in any step that lets you pass it an optional message. And that message appears directly below the code step or in the inspector to show you this workflow ended early for this reason. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. If we have not seen this user, we add the name to the list of users seen so far and then we finally save that modified data in dollar checkpoint. So this is kind of a trivial application of checkpointing and um, some of you advanced developers may already see that this array of users can get very, very large. So we can refactor this code, but the core concept here is that dollar checkpoint just lets you save any JSON serializable data in a specific workflow and then read that in future executions. The data you save in dollar checkpoint is specific to that workflow. So data in a different workflow for dollar checkpoint will be different. And our docs have a lot more information on this. I'm gonna deploy this. I'm gonna send a new test event. Since this is the first time I've added this code, I will get a duplicate message sent to Slack and email, okay? Because there was no state that I'd saved indicating that I'd already processed Luke Skywalker. The next time I send this message, we see already sent message for Luke Skywalker. So you can see it very clearly under the step where dollar end was called and in the inspector that we ended the workflow execution early and we display the execution end right here. There is so much more that I wish we could go over in this demo video about Pipetrain. Uh, you can add a readme to your workflow and share it publicly. You can actually um, add collaborators to your workflow, forward any errors that are raised in your workflow to a global error workflow, which lets you run code on errors and send those to Slack or PagerDuty. You can modify settings to enable Vim keyboard shortcuts or add environment variables. Um, if you're looking for more information about real world use cases on how people are using Pipedream, we've got some great tutorial workflows at the top of the explore page. We've got some featured workflows in the community for how people are actually using Pipedream uh, for a variety of applications to send data to S3, AWS, um, and just GitHub webhooks, Twitter data, all these really neat use cases. Uh, we'd love if you joined our Slack community. You can sign up right here on the community page. Um, we do support here. We'd love to hear feedback. Um, honestly, all we're looking for right now is for you to use the platform and for you to tell us how we can make it better. So we'd love if you could join Slack um, and give us any honest feedback there. And then our docs have uh, quite a bit of information on all the advanced features of Pipedream. We try to keep them up to date. So please take a look.
um, and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, have fun using Pipedream.